So I continue to um, work on my remote control at the moment. Um, it's looking like this. And although it looks like a hodgepodge of wires to you, um, a few things that I've gotten done is, um, well, let me switch the picture. So my batteries, you know, I've got the batteries installed. I've, I've got a wire here to um, read the voltage on the batteries uh, with the um, expectation as I'll ultimately, you know, be able to report on the voltage of the batteries and their health. Uh, run a couple of tests on when is it fully charged and when is it discharged to the point that the board starts to become unstable. You can't see it very well there, but there's a switch. I'll switch pictures. Um, there's a little slider switch there that I installed to be able to turn the power off and on from the battery so that it doesn't drain the board, you know, when it's not being used. Uh, the other thing I've gotten done is, it's not a really good picture, but this will operate as a dead man switch. Um, it's a little push button over on the side. I've, I'm finding it useful to just try to hot glue things in uh, at times just to get the spacing right and figure out what wires I need and where it's going to be sitting. But um, So that is now working. I've also gotten the LED, you know, four LEDs mounted on the top of the, the device. And this particular LED is, represents the radio signal, RSSI signal. Um, the code for that is all up in GitHub. See if I can get to that real quick. Um, come on. So this was a bit of an interesting process, which is why I'm taking time to review that with you. I've got a couple of different spots where I want to give a signal and then come back with what's the range um, that that's in. So I am trying to use an array here to say, if I get an RSSI, signal between these points, what is the corresponding color that I want the LED to represent? So, uh, you know, if the, if the value is between 90 and 120, let's see, that's sort of three spots over, you know, that's what I'm going to start to represent red. And you might say, well, why do you have so many of these elements in the array? And it's because I wanted to have one function I could call as well for uh, the steering points. So it's a, a effectively a series of nested if statements and I pass this array to it. I'm sure there's a more clever way to do that programmatically, but that's what, um, what I did, let's see, I'm trying to scroll down here. Why is it not allowed me to come down? So what that looks like code wise is, um,
this function. So I pass the I pass the array and I pass the sensor value and I get back a pointer to the array on which uh, classification that I want to use. So in the case of the function to check the the radio signal status, um, Let's see, the, re the return is, is the result of passing the array with the points and the actual RSSI. Um, and so then I, the color that I get out is the result of that, the result of that test. So it's, I, I like it um, and it lets me have different colors for my um, LEDs. Okay, and so what else? Uh, what I've not gotten done is to connect up this, what will be the e-stop switch, and I'm having some program problems uh, with that. So I don't know if I've got a hardware problem or a software problem, so. Um, I'm going to take a board that's not all wired up and run a few more tests and try to figure out whether I've got a wiring problem or using the wrong pin or using the wrong definition because it's obviously uh, obviously not working. So I think that's the status of my progress at, at the moment, I'm trying to get my remote control working. Any questions on that? Well, you have that picture right there. Have you taken this outside to see? Can you read that display in the sunlight? I have taken it outside, and you th that display is actually doing pretty well in the sunlight. I don't I mean it wasn't high noon on a crystal clear day, but um, it, it it did pretty good. And if, if it does get to be a problem, you can put like a build a little shade over the top of it so you can keep it in the shade when you look at it. I just know LCDs are really bad. You take them out in the sun, you can't read them at all. So I just wonder how these how these worked out. I, I was pretty I was pretty pleased with it so far. And at any point, keep in mind you can pull that tape, pull the pull the stuff off the front of that and it'll be a little easier <laughs> to read. It. it will start getting scratched up if you do that, but that that's something you could do. Oh you noticed I still had my uh, protective tape on there. Huh? Yeah. A little tab over there. And I don't know how, how good those screens are. If you take the protection off, I don't know if they're going to immediately scratch up or it can go forever. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not, not, not sure either. Uh, oh, the other thing, as I was, I think I mentioned on um, the voltage. Um, yeah, so I need to program changing the light based on the, the voltage and at the moment you can't really tell it here but um, with the voltage divider I used you know fully powered which is 4.25 volts is like 2500 and um, the board still runs but the lights start to show a little bit of uh, uneasiness when it's about 3.7 volts. So I just need to program in that in, program that in that in between those two voltages to get a green and when it starts to get close to 3.7 to, I don't know, go yellow or whatever, but you know, have to work out the exact timing of that. But with three batteries and the LEDs, um, about two and a half days. I mean, the, it could sit there for about two and a half days with three batteries. Um, so, I mean, that's obviously indoor temperature, and I'm sure that would have some impact if it was really cold, but that's what my 
duration is with without any uh, stress without stressing it. So you say you have a voltage divider connected to your batteries to read the voltage. Where is that connected directly to the batteries or to your power switch? Um, to the batteries. Oopsie daisy. Because you, if you connect it on the other side of your power switch, then you're not constantly running your battery down by having this uh, voltage divider stuck on there. That's a good tip. If I connect it on the other side of the power switch, so feed, okay, so take the direct voltage into the, um, well, instead of connecting, where do I put the signal? Instead of connecting your voltage divider directly to the battery, just connect it to the, to the uh, output of output. the switch. Yeah. So you, so the way you've got it here, you're gonna. Have, it looks like you have to rebuild your voltage divider and put it somewhere else. But, but yeah, just take the switched voltage and then measure that. So. That's a good tip. Did you pull those batteries out of something? Is that why they have glue on them and have the plastic yes. ripped off? Pulled them out of a, a medical, some sort of medical device. Um, that I got from a place called Battery Hookup. Okay. They go for about a, about a dollar a piece. Well, I just found a box that's got some kind of lithium ion batteries in it and they seem to be two cells stacked together. And I, I somebody gave me this whole box at one time, they're brand new batteries out of something. So it's got the batteries and three wires coming off the thing. And if, if anybody has need for that, I could probably probably distribute those because I'll, I'll probably never use them. How many batteries do you have? Uh, I'm guessing like 10 or 15 in the box. It might be more expensive to ship them, but um, yeah, I mean, um, we can talk. Anyway, so that's where I'm at. Uh, still trying to get the daggone uh, remote control uh, working and configured, but making progress. So I, I haven't been doing anything, so I don't have much to report. I don't have anything to report. The only thing I report is I was cleaning off my workbench in my, my lab. I got down to the tabletop and there's kind of blue liquid there. Like, what is this? And I wiped it up and moved stuff around. There's more blue liquid. Whereas a, a, a plastic bottle that said marine oil and it was laying there. So that leaked out all over the top of the countertop. But it was like a Formica countertop. So it's cleaned up fairly well. And so that was kind of a surprise. I would, I'd never heard of marine oil being blue. I wonder why they do that. I don't know. It's probably like a synthetic uh, two cycle oil or something. But I, that's just, I guess they're trademarked. The bottle itself was blue and the stuff was in it seemed to be blue. And you don't remember where you bought marine oil? Uh, it, it might have come from a, um, a swap meet or something because it's, it's not something I would normally buy. But I, I remember I ran across it one day and thought, oh, I better hang on to that. I didn't know what it was. Have you listened in on any other meetings, the robotic meetings with Dallas or Minneapolis or anybody? No, not for a while. I think we can stop recording. Okay.